Hey, well, welcome to the Dream Labs. Dr. Contrast live here. Uh, just uh, really good to have uh, a little bit of time spent here to get back on board with everybody. And uh, just uh, very interesting. Give you a quick introduction here. Um, well, we're going to go through today. I, I just, it was interesting. Last week, uh, last Thursday, I went through a process of just uh, some volumetric integration where a young person from England was having a bit of a rough time going through, what do I draw? So I just uh, spent a little time last week um, going through a process of putting solids together and begin to integrate the shapes to develop a newness and at the same time uh, open some things up in terms of not being fearful of putting down ideas and making mistakes uh, so I think um, a very interesting set of circumstances and lo and behold here throughout the course of the week I just received an email last evening from a young man in Palo Alto California it was interesting and uh, he's uh, studying um, landscape architecture and architecture and I thought you know it'd be kind of nice to give him a little bit of briefing here on some projects I've worked on in the past that encompass all of those things so rather than any drawing here today I just have to go through a case history and let you see what had taken place uh, some time ago when I was contracted. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a background here before we start going through some of the sketches. Um, I was contracted or contacted, pardon me, about oh, some time ago by the, uh, the design staff at Procter & Gamble. Um, and um, they got my name. I did a lot of association work with. Hey, hi, David. How are you? Uh, nice. Uh, good to have you on board, David. Hope you're having a great new year. And thanks for taking the time to tune in. But yeah, landscape architecture and interior and exterior is really, to me, a very intriguing process. Um, it encompasses a lot of great thinking methodologies. You have to be on your toes about certain things of scale, texture, color, etc. All those things are rolled into it. Not that it's any different than product design or transportation or, or, or any other schedules, but uh, this was interesting because, again, when they approached me, they had this project um, uh, under wraps, kind of a stealth program called the, the Visioneering System, uh, or Project Visioneering, uh, that's how they put it. And um, so I went down to Cincinnati, had a brief meeting with their, with their design team, and uh, came out of there rather surprised because there was no indication at all, there no, um, no substance in terms of uh, here the scale of the project, here's the square footage, here's the footprint. Uh, none of that was even available. And, uh, and I asked several, several questions about why that was the case. I said, well, we're not going to get into a lot of that yet because we want to see what we can do to develop something that's completely unique and new. Hey, how you doing, Chip? Good to have you on board, man. Um, long time no speak. Hope you're having a great new year, and thanks for joining in. Um, so uh, as it turned out, um, I, I, I left there thinking, my, this is really an open, this is an open book in terms of being able to create something. And, um, and that's exactly what they asked me to do. Uh, just have at it and go through a series of sketch work. And this, this is a long process, by the way. This didn't happen in white. You only need a stereoscope. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? What you, is that, it's my new, uh, that's my new look here, Chip. So thank you very much. It's the Dr. Contrast Jacket of Sport. So nonetheless, um, good to have you on board, uh, uh, gang. Um, so back to the storyline here. So I came back to the office. I just sat down and started to put together an agenda in terms of how to begin the process, how to get these things started. And uh, what I did today is I just brought out a, a whole stack of conceptual sketches from the very beginning all the way through the end. And, and I'll show you some final sketches here that we have through the process here. And um, as I go through these, I'll try to be very brief and succinct and not bore you to death with a lot of different uh, um, out, uh, explanations as to how, why, and where. But as usual, I mean, I started out with a series of just the written, they gave me, I take that back, they did give me a couple of ground rules in terms of what the concept that this visionary system was going to look like. They wanted a lot of expanse, they wanted a lot of organic work, a lot of glass. Um, very open-ended as far as the interior space is concerned. So I went through the whole process of going through the exterior and the interior, as well as some landscape work. Not so much landscape work, but that came later. But I think this would be a good program, case study today, to see how the, how the process, this is more of an, a case study and how the process begins to unfold itself from step to step to step. So let me, let me start here by going through the process here. Let's kind of leaf through these sketches very quickly. This is the first uh, set of sketches, ballpoint pen, a little bit of marker added, getting in some plan view work, uh, a little bit of an elevator, or a, a perspective study of what the, what the format might be in terms of the little bit of perspective and then into a little bit of an elevation study so this is the first gang of sketches I really started to generate and uh, I, I, I crank out a bunch uh, email them down there go to certain meetings once a week or whatever and go through the process and by the way overall I'm really pleased to say that from beginning to end this project was really well received by the design group down there and it became the new campus 
uh, for Procter & Gamble's uh, Design Center, uh, which I thought was really uh, quite a quite an honor for me to be a part of. So uh, all to say that, that, that let you know in the very beginning that this was a, something that wasn't just an exercise of putting together sketches and nothing was happening with it. It was a very, very intense process by step by step by step pro uh, progress in developing a theme or something that they could go back and uh, begin to uh, generate this thing from an architectural build system, materials technology and the like. And an interesting thing too, they didn't have an architectural firm uh, from the very beginning. What they did was allow me to become the creative element and then they went to the architectural firm and then when that came to pass, it was really interesting too. When that part came to pass, I became part of the architectural team to help them advise uh, what the sketches meant, what the, what the, what the language was and uh, what the interpretation might be. So it was a really interesting case study all the way through and I hope you enjoy the process as we go through it here. So here's the first uh, little study that went through it. There's one, a little line drawing of a little overhead, overhead view. Uh, again, an elevation, a little bit of perspective. Just, just getting started here. I'm just, I wasn't really, I wasn't really, um, uh, for, for lack of a better comment, really adventuresome in the very beginning. I, I was very cautious and uh, not because I was uh, fearful of it, but I just wanted to make sure we didn't really shock them to death with some of the things they've been used to. Uh, these sketches came about in the very initial stages about some of the character they felt would be interesting to develop. So uh, again, I, I just pull back a little bit as we go through the process, you'll see it get a lot more adventuresome as we go. And that became a matter of confidence in working with them and with me in the interchange of ideas going back and forth. So again, I, again, let me stop here for a moment too, just to interject a very interesting in, in point. No matter what your discipline is in design, whether it's graphics, architecture, transportation, no matter what the format is, I hope you'll agree with me that one of the most advantageous processes or techniques we will have is the ability to articulate our ideas, not only verbally, but visually, and to listen well when we go through a process. This is a product here of listening very, very well about what they wanted to accomplish, what the yeas and nays were. And I can't stress enough about the fact that this is not an instance here, in my case, or any, any project I take on, it's not a matter of me getting, oh yeah, get out of your way, uh, out of my way. Um, I'm the design guy now. I'm really tuned into, this is your project. This is your system. You've invited me to be a part of that process. I'm gonna respect that by being very, very cordial in terms of making sure that we are communicating clearly and things are coming along nicely. Now that doesn't mean, for example, that if, if there's something that I feel that's not quite in the, in the structure or the nomenclature of what we're after, then we, then we chat back and forth and get it resolved. But I, I think the key thing is, no matter what you're just the ability to be able to work with people, not so much compromise, but the lead is really, really important. So here we go. There's this, again, little elevation sketch and a little overview. This is sketch number two. Now back to some little thumbnail sketches again, opening things up a little bit, a little more organic, um, a little more adventuresome. The scale's not quite here yet. I'm just looking for a theme or an idea to get back to them. Uh, four little studies here in terms of uh, what that vehicle or what that process might look like for this visionary system. So there's another one there. We we'll go back into this. Some of the additional now notice again a little more, a little bit more flamboyant now. Um, this is a result in the fourth study here. Um, I started to just take some chances in terms of what do we, what if we tried this like the cantilever a lot of sweep, a real crowning and, and capped it with a, almost like a, a, um, a shed system on top of that to kind of work with it. And again, a little more organic with these, these little pieces of inserts or cubistic elements that became office space in a second story. Um, and again, back to the more organic form in the last study here, and that's that. Then back to line drawing again, being very safe, looking at some little plan view sketches and elevation and a little bit of an overview. This is only one portion of the vehicle, of the building itself uh, that, that we're looking at here. And the other pieces were, would come together and would expand on this theme. In this particular instance here, I was looking for a theme. What if we started with the main headquarters, like an entry, an introduction, entry area, then we went into some expansion in terms of putting the whole program of the camp us together. So this is another little study here. Then jumping back again into some little quick and dirty, what I refer to um, um, marker or marker and the ballpoint pen sketches, a little bit more stretch in the elevations, a little more adventuresome again to me, a little more organic. Um, and I think it's interesting, can't decide on a favorite. Yeah, I mean, either, it's, if I went through the whole process and then you'll see the end of the, at the end of the session here, what, they, uh, what, what some of the um, um, final decisions were. Um, but again, I think it was mostly uh, the real key to it all was uh, they wanted a lot more glass, a lot of organics, and something extremely contemporary and, and unique for its time period. Uh, so um, this is, again, a little passive of sketches 
of uh, getting, and again, the scale's not quite there yet, because I, I wanted to make sure we had a theme going. I'm gonna go back and look at some things in terms of expanding that theme and making it a little more, because I think when, when it all said and done, I got the sense from the group that they were looking at a theme center, or a, a, what would you call a nuclei, then begin to build a campus around that with some, with some uh, uh, compatible structures and so forth. We're the one with all the glass. Yeah, me too. The glass is cool. That was a real, uh, that was one of the situations that Chip, they wanted to really hone in on. Glass, very light and airy. And as you'll see, we go through the sketches, how that begins uh, to take place, even in the interior as well. So there's another little study. Another little overview, uh, three-quarter little, uh, little gateway piece, a little cantilever uh, entryway piece, and coming into the building itself again. This would be a module or a core system of what we build around as far as the actual shape is concerned. Notice, very rectangular. Uh, we could open that up, become a little more organic. Again, we're t I'm taking chances here, saying, what if, what about this? And then my conversation with them, looking at these sketches, made it very clear, this is a core system here we can build out on or adjust. We're gonna, we're gonna stretch it, expand it, compress it, modulate it, and begin to make changes in terms of what we want to accomplish for the overall process here. So let's go back here, finish these guys out. And then there's another little same, same set of circumstances, another little, um, uh, elevation, pardon me, uh, perspective, a little bit of an overview in terms of what that, that form might look like. Again, one shape here, um, sort of be redundant, but this is only the core system itself. This thing would expand enormously into what is called the, the, to address, the, pardon me, to address their visionary concept. that was called Project Visionary, which is a whole new look at how their design center might uh, become to become come to life and become part of the process. So let's go move on here uh, and do some little color studies. Again, keeping it very simple. Uh, what about the glass uppers and the whole glass atrium area? Is that a possibility? What does this look like? It's very, it's very stoic and very straightforward. But again, running back and forth between very adventuresome, very um, aggressive, and then very sedate. So not quite sure yet which way they wanted to handle this thing. So let's move on here, sketch. There's another one, a little bit of a variation of the theme. Notice how we're starting to see some of the additions as we go to that um, uh, little perspective study here. Again, that same glass cantilevered area up on top of the roof. Um, again, very simple sketch, but uh, here I'm really concentrating on just getting some flavor down. Do you like the glass? Do you like the brick interface? What's, what's taking place here? Is brick gonna be part of the process? Is it all gonna be sheet metal? We don't know at this stage of the game because it strictly is something that is going to be a visionary project that's a conceptual study. So let's move on here. So once I pass through those sketches, I'm going to right back into some old-fashioned um, newsprint here and uh, terracotta pencil. Now you'll start to see some really open up. This is a product now. This next uh, group of sketches was really a product of, all right, now we've seen, we've had, uh, they've had an occasion to work with me. They've seen how I think and I see how they think. So the compatibility became very strong in terms of the confidence level lifted. And uh, the comment they made at this stage of the game was, okay, JD, Dr. Contrast, move it up. I mean, have some fun with this thing. You've got some great ideas here, but some of the themes you've worked on earlier, let's stretch them out and begin to look at these guys. So this is, again, the beginning of, notice how the, the, the stretch is coming to, uh, coming to play. A lot more adventuresome in some of the entryway areas. Some multiple buildings in the campus area. This is a little detail of that uh, front end area. And again, same thing here, a little bit of a detail of the entryway. Uh, again, uh, on newsprint, there it is. Then sketch number two. Notice again, much more flamboyant. Um, little entryway canopies outside of the entryway itself. Uh, just kind of focusing in on some things, and a theme that would kind of build something around these canopies who are part of this plan view process here. And then we went into the building itself. And then uh, I wasn't really concerned with this family of sketches about getting the overall character of the building. In some cases they were. But in most cases, looking for a certain theme, like something that was dramatic in the entry piece that they, they stated in this, in this portion of the process, they wanted something really dramatically different as you approach this campus. So um, I tried to stretch it as best I could from their input to get that accomplished. And here's another little variation on theme, a little more of a shed look, very simple. Uh, but yet, nonetheless, giving another look at uh, certain uh, ways I could handle that process uh, and uh, to get that uh, goal established. And again, another little series of sketches here. Uh, notice, uh, pulling back a little bit, giving them a little bit more of a view of what this is. And again, notice the shed roof system, same shed system here. A glass atrium piece that you walk through to enter the building. A little bit of a plan view here to show the apron area and landscaping area, like the sidewalk and some shrubbery and so forth, and, uh, and entering the, uh, the actual facility. So, so there we are, there's another little study. This is interesting too. This is getting into a really interesting, almost floating module piece that sits out front here. Uh, we could replace that, that piece with what happened in the plan view here. And then looking at the elevations, for example, and what that might look like in terms of time back into the building. Um, again, another curtain piece here. This is that, that, that piece of cantilevers coming out. 
that part of the cantilever was replaced in some cases with this almost a saucer type entry piece that you'd kind of walk through and enter the building itself. So there we are, another family of sketches there. And we'll keep going here. And again, another really different approach at looking, this is a glass, almost um, truncated uh, cone that had a very dramatic entryway coming through here. But this is all glass with some fiber optic lighting in it. And uh, at night, we kind of move into uh, certain different color patterns. Again, notice a very typical building around it. So if this were a choice that was made by that team, I would certainly have just said, you know what, we need to, if that's the theme you're after, we need to really get much more adventuresome with the actual architecture itself and how we deal with it. So again, just looking at uh, just a broad brush of a whole lot of different things. I hope this is making sense and you're enjoying this thus far and I'm not job owning too much because it does require an explanation about what the process was. And again, this is a case study from start to finish on a very expansive project that I thought was um, in addressing uh, the, uh, uh, the concern or question I had from this young student out in California about architecture, architecture interior and landscape work. So I'm hoping it helps him if he does look at this thing later on on YouTube. I hope it gives him some insight as to what he's looking forward to in his career choice. So let's kind of move on here. Again, another really interesting really getting very global in terms of putting the whole, there's a global headquarters with some of the old structure in the background where their offices are. Um, again, a little overview, again, perspective, a little bit of landscape work in front of it. And again, a little detail here in the landscaping process of what these guys begin to look like um, in the plan view as you, as you enter the building itself. So there we are there. Now this is fun. Let me just kind of put these aside for a moment. That's coming up later. Now I switched gears and went into something that I thought was really a lot of fun. I switched gears here very quickly and went from a very typical approach in paper surfaces and went to black hands on and just did a whole series of these guys. Very quick burst sketches looking at the family of three. Let's, let's open these up first here. Three studies. If I got my fingers to work, we'll be good. So there's there's three. Let's get let's get these moved up a little bit here. Let's get a little more screen space. There it is. There's one. There's two, and there's three. This is an interesting venture or a juncture in the project itself. Um, I switched gears from going from traditional paper like uh, bond or newsprint into tone because tone, uh, in a case such as this, begins to begin to develop a different thinking process. You start to see the negative as opposed to the positive. Uh, and I thought maybe an interesting little approach to changing the tempo with white prismatic color pencil on black tone just to give it a different atmosphere and add a little bit of pastel to it, put a bit of wash into it. So what it helped me do was open up the avenues of approach and a little bit more intuitive in terms of developing some conceptual pieces that might have been a little bit newer. You notice some of the, some of the uh, structures here, uh, tetrahedron glass and, and on top here, uh, twin shed. Uh, uh, again, sweeping cantilever, almost an Italian Renaissance look. Uh, yeah, this is this is neat stuff, uh, Jeff. This is really a lot of fun as far as approach goes. Uh, and the reason I utilize that technique is because it's such a different, dramatic approach to it all. And I think in a case like this, with the scale of this project, it was really helpful to kind of move away from that and get a lot more dramatic with this thing. So tone paper, these were very well received, by the way. Um, I took these sketches, and there's a total of six. I'll show you in a moment here. I don't know if I can get them all on the screen all at once. But it took all these sketches, and these are done at about maybe uh, three by eight, thereabouts, three by seven. I took these sketches and blew them up about five times size and shipped them down there. Man, it was just dramatic. That, that big high impact dark background with that white pencil just screamed. So that was a nice little change of pace. And I think it surprised the design committee because they're expecting the typical, oh yeah, this is not, oh yeah. And when they saw this, they went, holy mackerel. This is really dramatic. So they used this as a real springboard to move into the next phase here, which I'll show you in a moment. Let's kind of put these aside and I'll show you the remainder of these little thumbnail studies. Let's get these lined up. Again, same same process again. Black cans on. There's one. And get my fingers lined up here. We'll be good. There's one. There's two. And I think we get the third one here without any interference. There we go. Let's move them up just a bit. So there it is. There it is. And there it is. Hopefully that'll make some sense. Notice again how um, the expansion is beginning to take place in terms of really opening up the, the, uh, the concept in, in terms of being a little more lucid with it, a little bit more venturesome. At this stage of the game in this process, I think uh, this is about maybe three to four months into it, um, much more confidence uh, from my point of view. They respected the fact that I was the, the kind of like the lead design guy, and they had a lot more confidence um, in my approach since uh, I just kept funneling work out, just shipping it down to them. 
kept them on their toes at all times, and myself on my toes as well, to learn something about this whole process, which was a really rewarding uh, uh, project for me to, to uh, require. I mean, I learned an awful lot. I have a great relationship with the P&G gang as a result of that, and uh, boy, it's been a lot of fun. So this is, again, the culmination of those little switch gears in a tone paper, and it really forces everybody out of the box in terms of, oh, I didn't know we could do that. Yeah, this is something we can approach and notice a lot more um, sculptural in the entryway, a lot more dramatic in terms of entryway, and a lot more forceful in the entryway. So, and again, this actual structure, this is all a, like a shrouded glass canopy on top of a very rectangular, straightforward form. And I think it's interesting to note at this time, too, that um, even at this stage of the game, there wasn't a real edict in terms of, well, we're going to have this and this and this. They, they weren't looking for a footprint as or a, or a system of completion as much as a, an approach to conceptualization. That's why this project was so unique, and that's why I thought I'd bring it in today for this young person out in California to take a look at, because it just, it was devoid of any restriction. Yes, it came later on, uh, after we kind of followed into a certain comp concept and got the ideas down, but the coolness of it all was the freedom of being able to express certain things as a result of being assigned to one simple process. Let us see what the vision looks like. So this is fun. So let me go back here. We'll get these out of the way. And I, no, let's, at this stage of the game, um, or the process, it was a very interesting thing. This happened now. Now we went into some things, for example, that we, we had a designated area that they wanted to work with just to get a flavor of character established. And that designated area was roughly 160 feet by 160, but almost square. But it had within it certain station areas, for example, uh, and you'll see a series of little uh, bluster studies here. That begin to, this is receptionary. Enter in here, reception, engineering division, fabrication, design huts, for example, integration modules, integration module for design, integration again, three modules for that, and then product support and packaging development. So underneath the roof of, of, of this system, we began to look at what does this interior space look like? This is only one portion of it. This is just an idea. Of, if we had an area uh, roughly 160 by 160, what would, what would that breakdown look like? And we have to have these elements placed in it. So here's a good process for those of you involved in this kind of, a, of, a, of a, this sort of discipline, how to break it down and not do sketches, so to speak, but just designate areas, and they're called a blister diagram. And what we've done here is, again, notice it's in the reception area ties into all the areas, and then you know, kind of field her out into one, two, three, four, five, six different integrations. So this is one study, and then a little perspective on how it lays out, for example, in the actual space itself. So it started there, let's do this. There was one variation on theme. There's another variation on the theme, same, same set of circumstances, same space, but breaking it up a little bit more in terms of, let's look at this for just a moment. Notice how in this one, it was engineering that was front and center and also fabrication. In this particular module, it was fabrication, designed up engineering support was next to the hub, as well as product support. So they kind of synergized together there to get, get, get an, an, an empathic input. And then again, the concept cells, or the ideation cells, for the designers to sit down and begin to generate ideas were in the back of the room. Again, reception was in the same area. But again, notice how it's interesting how now you have reception and integration into fabrication, and that, all that fed right down into the concept cells are all part of this whole process. So this is how I like to think in terms of breaking down a space for utilization in different disciplines and different areas within the uh, within the product or the process. Pardon me for a moment. Let me get these organized here for a second. Get out of the way. Thank you. So um, again, is this helping, gang? Making any sense, or am I going to? Um, I don't want to get too over uh, verbalized with this. I just want to go through the process and make sure that, that we see it from beginning to end, and what the gestation is like, and what the elements uh, begin to look like when you go through the process. So that was blister study number two, and we uh, defined that, for example, as floor space allocation. What do we need as far as area goes? And they gave me a module of 60, one, roughly 160 by 160. Notice a little red outline here, for example. This is a basic entryway in the building itself, down the hallway into the reception area. And again, this is one, one section. As I stated earlier, we got a cell established or a module established, and we expand out of that. Uh, to, um, a, a very hi, David. Uh, thanks very much. Um, this is the process of how I'm sure you think, and how we all think in terms of once we get an assignment, we should break it down accordingly, to, so we don't miss any steps or assume that everything's going to be fine. This is this is a product. This this phase here. Um, this uh, blister study or the space allocation was a product of a lot of conversation back and forth about how do we break it down? What do we look like? What do we want it to? What do, you, what do you want it to? What areas are designated for it within this within this uh, footprint? So there it is. There's uh, another study, and I did another. And now from that, this is fun. 
From those two studies, let me just see if I can get these laid out side by side. I don't know if we'll be able to make it or not. Let's see if we can get these together. Uh, pretty close. If we have both of those in place, notice begins to happen. Started here, phase one, phase two. Um, lots of plenty more were established as a result of this. But let's let's do this. As a result of this process, now they came back and said, "Hey, you know what? Hey, JD, Dr. Contrast, we want to see you move into some interior space studies. What does that look like when I come down the hallway?" For example, I mentioned earlier here, um, this is the entryway down the corridor, and the primary entryway was in the primary face of the building. So what does it look like when you come down that hallway? What, what kind of drama can we create to give this thing a visionary concept piece? So this is, a, this is the beginning of a whole bunch of really quick, loose ballpoint pen sketches. I'm looking at down that hallway, what does it begin to look like? Are there support gussets? Are there, is, there, is there fabric in the roof? Is it all illuminated? Uh, how do we break that space down? So these are very quick, fast sketches, and I'll go through these very quickly to not bore you to death, about what that interior space might begin to look like. So there's one, pardon me, into the second one. Again, notice these are all these these areas here are all different panels in terms of no well, notice very organic. I try to bring the outside of the building, the exterior, into the interior, very organic. Again, very, very almost a shed-like or also uh, hut type. Uh, cantilevered radius roof with these very strong portions of these elements, these steel metal or these metal pieces or fabricated pieces coming off of the actual structure itself to provide a means of light. That could be a lighting system, could be any number of things. And with the logo in place here, for it might be Gillette or something, I don't know. But nonetheless, uh, I guess some 70s vibe from the ceiling. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's really interesting how that whole process, this whole process here, Chip, that whole ceiling was all uh, what I would refer to as floating lighting. This is all digital and uh, light emitting diode, so it changed color in terms of uh, time. I uh, love this session very, oh, that's great. Thanks very much, Doug, I really appreciate it. Um, this is all light emitting diode, uh, very dramatic. Notice it reflected down on the floor, etc. So again, stretching the envelope a little further than, and, and as a result of, of maintaining a really, and I, 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 let me stop here for a moment and just interject a simple thought. One of the most precious things you can develop as a designer is a respect for your peers. And how do you get that respect for your peers? By being a really good listener, not doing what you want to do, not, not taking the boundary and saying, okay, get out of my way and just um, step aside, I'm here now. By being a very good listener in a discipline and promising when you, when you say something to somebody, you'll have it by Thursday, have it by Wednesday. Be better than your word. Those are the things that are invaluable. And that's what caused this whole project to open up when I first started. Notice the first sketches were kind of sedate. Now we're getting into the era where it's a lot more um, yeah, you full carpeted too. <laughs> wall to wall carpeting. <laughs> I don't know. I think this is more graphic statement here, uh, Chip, in terms of what we're looking at. But I think that, that whole concept of, of earning the trust and the confidence and respect of your peers is extremely critical. I mean, you can't get by without it. As you all know, uh, Chip, you go through that. Dave, you've gone through it. Uh, Doug, you go through it. Uh, it's essential. Without it, um, you're dead in the water. So back to the concept here. Again, looking at what this interior space might begin to look like in that one given little module area. Now, there's another little study. Now, really opening up a little bit, we're getting a lot of variation on themes with color, for example, these very form-related ribbons up on the ceiling surface. Again, lighting. Notice again, this is very, very interesting lighting track. Notice how we're starting to get some of the some of the uh, uh, process of. Uh, of, of the like, let's say, let's like, be a healthcare, men's healthcare, where we start to look some of the blade systems and graphics on the wall, visioneering entryway and so forth, and how you enter the actual structure itself. This is the entry into that, that area we were talking about um, a little bit earlier. So, again, a lot more venturesome. Now, getting into some little module studies here, and maybe there's some sculptural pieces in the hallway. Again, back to that lighting system. Uh, very, very strong, bold area when you come in, P&G Visioneering. Uh, the whole process starts to open up a bit more. Uh, very sculptural, very, very almost blade-like aircraft type uh, surfaces. To, again, bringing the exterior into the interior, giving it an, almost a synergized feel that you're not looking at two different systems or they begin to relate one to another. And I think that's part of the process of good design, that it has a compatibility about it and its, a, and it, and its statement is very complete unto itself. It's not fractured. It's like a good sentence structure. It's nice to know that when you speak well, you speak well. And if you do speak well, speak with authority. And that's what this stuff does, hopefully. So here we go, another little study here. Again, notice a little bit of line drawing in terms of this is an interior study with a roof. This is this is like a little, like a um, a helix stairwell up into the up, up our second floor living module where the design group would be, and this is like the entryway into the reception area, some of the desking areas, just a just a real loose 
quick sketch of what the overall form might look like in terms of one space. Uh, again, a whole bunch of these guys are done, so let's kind of move through them. There's another little, th little quick little study about coming back to the entryway. Uh, the second level where you come up into that area for, for design inter inter uh, uh, meetings and uh, conferences and the like. We come back to this guy. It's kind of cool here. We'll just have to open up a little bit where you get into some tube lighting and some of the HVAC systems, entryway desk. Uh, again, roofing system, lighting, and so forth. Just looking at what would you do with this space to really kind of give it a whole new uh, twist. And using perspective is a real dramatic force to get things done. So uh, let me stop here for a minute, guys. I uh, hope this is making sense. I'm not going too quickly here. So please let me know if this is, uh, if my language is not uh, um, running on and confusing the, system, uh, the uh, situation there. So thank you very much for your attention. So let's move on here. Um, feel free to pipe in any, any questions. Feel free to fire away. Another little interior. Now, this is really interesting, all of a sudden, enough. a lot more organic in the ceiling structure. This is a, an elevator system that goes up around that second floor area where the design uh, uh, facility would be located. Again, modules within the area itself for design uh, tables and stations for the engineering group or the fabrication group to kind of work in. And, and now, this is interesting. Now, we're back into, again, some really quick blister studies on how this thing begins to apply. Uh, this almost goes back to those blister studies. Uh, all good, I'm just enjoying the ride. Hey, very good, Chip, cool. Um, so what's interesting, now, after going through a whole series of those pieces, now I went back into that same 50, 160 by 160 module and said, what would it look like if we break this space down? What does it begin to look like again? Here's a little thumbnail sketch of what we're looking at here in this whole this rotunda. You go up as this helix staircase into the second floor where the design group is. So this is where I started. So phase one was this. That's what that looked like. Now phase two. Let's start another stack here. Let's do this, get it out of the way. There's another one, for example, the same thing. What are you what do you do with the same space? Breaking down the areas with desks and, and locations and just laying it in and scale. Then what does it look like when you walk in, for example? Again, this is that silo I was telling you about where you come into that second elevator, takes you up to the second floor where the design conference is, which is down here in purple. And that would be the uh, sports hub. Yeah, that, that's the, the sport hub for the activity group to come in and we're going to function through the process. So there's another little study about allocation. Third one, again, the allocation. This is another one where you actually, a very simple, straightforward one where the design hub is in one core area here. And then these little cells are separate under themselves, but they're much more, um, they're much more geometric, geometric, less organic, but the same process applies. And uh, again, try to do a little thumbnail sketch here what that little module would look like in the design hub area. So again, really thinking through the process and getting the right scale in terms of where we are in terms of putting the package together overall. Now, as a result of those sketches, those last three or four we looked at, now we move into this. Now we get really explosive sketches in terms of what does it look like, for example, when you walk into this space for the very first time. Really powerful stuff. I mean, here it is. You come down the entryway, and there's a there's a module here that's all maybe all video program, all video, all video but no, it opens up and develops this very almost this fractured uh, conical shape that really begins to really bring you into the space. And again, this is second story here. I don't know how you get there yet, but uh, we haven't gotten to that point. But again, very dramatic in terms of what the what the roof structure is. A little bit of the outside, and then again, this area here. This area here is up inside that module. So very dramatic. Uh, just again, look and notice how we just sculpt, sculpt, sculpt the shapes around it where these groups, these support groups are gonna fall into place. So there's sketch number one. Sketch number two, now, and again, notice really getting into a lot of interesting things as far as texture goes in the roof. Here's that silo, we that elevator you go up into the second floor we were referring to earlier. Um, again, thumbnail sketches, a little bit of an overview looking into the space itself, what it might look like. Then here's that elevator coming to the second floor into that area. Uh, again, private uh, sections and so forth for the, the support group uh, within the team itself. Another study, look at that. Man, you come into this space and just open this beauty right up. And it's just, it's, again, a series of uh, entryway, uh, ceiling structure, some glass for the exterior. The entranceway is really backing through here. And these are just modules that walk you through the process itself. And, it, and uh, maybe just some stimulation, some exciting work around the, uh, the interior space itself to let you see what, what's going on in this space. And I think a, a key thing here to bring up as well is, is that, that the reason these sketches were done in the format in which they were done, I mean, I stretched the envelope now, now I'm really getting into an area where, okay, let's take some chances here. And by the way, I'll say this to every one of these studies were really well received. They had a hard time picking, oh, this is a neat, oh, this is neat. And that, that's what you wanna hear. 
And I think that's a product of doing your job well, and you do it well because you listen well. And I can't stress that enough. It's not a matter of going out there and saying, hey, this is cool. No, it's cool because you've listened to the input coming from the people who've hired you. That's the difference. So again, I really felt very strong here in terms of once it started, about, this is about maybe two or three months into it, all of a sudden it started to open up a little bit and the confidence was very obvious. It was just fun to go back and forth on some of these studies. Let's move along here. Here's another little concept sketch here. You notice the, the, the elevator study going up to the second floor. Uh, entryway with some of the desking areas there are some of the some of the graphics in the ceiling some of the exterior work and then the hallway is over here uh, entrance is right back in this corner uh, again another little and again very complicated and very structural almost trust like ceiling structure to put this interior space together let's go back to another one here this is really the one i thought was really interesting that became this almost like a space module uh, where you come in for example the entryway reception area here and then all of a sudden a glass exterior but you come back in again around this area up around the staircase and up into the elevator and then the second floor this is a very rotunda area here this, this little plan view study shows you what's taking place here it's a, a global activity center where you come back to this helix up into the area here and that's where all the design concentration begins to take place so again notice how each each sketch gets a little more adventuresome a little more risky a little more uh, fluid and uh, very flamboyant in terms of design approach or conceptualization which is, I think, the great thing. Um, the great thing about the whole process. I mean, got a question. Here, pardon me. Uh, from Chip, do you take the interior space available when sketching this? Because those look like pretty big. But yeah, yes, they are. Um, I do take that into account. That Chip, these are very large spaces. Um, again, when you look at 160 feet by 160 feet, um, they opened it up a little bit. Um, they maybe shrink a little bit. But yes, they are very, very large areas, and I think that kind of reflects itself in terms of what the overall footprint was in that small little module area. Uh, let me stop there for a moment. Does that help to answer your question, Chip? I'll just hang on here to me before I move along here. Yeah, that, there's no question. Uh, the, the, it, the whole feel was, this is, a, again, let's go back, just not to be redundant, but just to kind of bring you up to speed here. The, the, the purpose of this visionary project was to look at a vision without restriction as to what this form or what this new structure, this new design center would look like. Yeah, and we finally got to a place where let's look at one spot, for example. If there's a design hub or, or an entryway area for the designers, what does that look like? Let's say it's 160, 160. It could be end up, it could end up being twice as large, uh, uh, Chip. But the but the but the format here was to open up and, and work within that constraint of that that 160, 200 by 200 roughly, and then open that up and see what that format looked like with a whole variety of different approaches for these certain disciplines that are going to be involved in this whole team process. So let's move along here. Well, thank you very much. And again, here's another little concept sketch about kind of breaking things down a little bit. Again, notice the modules here in terms of how to get into that second floor area. Uh, what happens here coming through into this area here. Uh, some graphic wall surfaces and very, very organic and fluid to kind of walk you through the process so you don't feel like you're trapped in or your wall. Notice all these sketches have one thing in common. There is not a single wall that breaks you away from hiding from the rest of the group. They're all open-ended. Yes, there's some, there's some interface in terms of, of uh, set certain sections of disciplines, but it still has an ability to open things up and to, to not work in the secret or to be alienated. So there's another little series. Now we're going back in again to the hallways and like a big global PNG uh, surface here coming down the hallway. Ceiling graphics, um, again, some ceiling graphics. Little elevation about the cantilever to the radius roof. Entryway again, uh, going back to the hallway study. Again, back to simple little thumbnail sketches here. Again, here's another family of forms. Again, looking again, lighting, hallway surfaces, uh, graphics in the ceiling. Very simple, straightforward. Some little, little entryway for the, uh, I mean, some entrance pieces into the actual entryway into the, the actual design hub itself. Another little study here. Same, same very organic wall surfaces. Notice I put some blade metals up on the walls to break space up a little bit. Little, real fast, little sketches here. Another series of family of studies. No, it's just almost looking down on it with these different forms coming up that very, uh, very um, radius uh, ceiling surface, but yet putting these spears in here that become either lighting systems or message boards of some sort, which these could become, they're all spec on the wall. That was all part of the process that I really didn't really um, specify too much in terms of, of what would go in there. I'm just looking for character or shape. So there you go. There we are. The last little study. Now this is this. Uh, I'm going to try to wrap it up and get these forms, these sketches in place here. Um, <clears throat> Wrap it up a little bit here for you. When you come down the pike here, this is going back to almost the initial space again. After going through all that process, let me just kind of separate these out a little bit here. This is one family of forms here that we go back to and look at the, uh, for, for breakdown. Here's the actual main hallway. 
There's the actual form itself, 160 by roughly 160. Here are the actual pieces, product supply, engineering, design hub, creativity module, packaging, and fabrication. So all these areas are designated for those particular uh, disciplines. So let's kind of take the, the clip off of this guy and you know, walk you through the process. There was phase one. That's the plan view of the actual uh, form itself. A little perspective uh, study about what that, when you look into it, this is what that begins to look like. Notice, if you notice, let's see if I can get these side by side here. Uh, uh, close, let's do that, there we are. Notice this little diamond form here is really resident right in through here. So this is a perspective interpretation of what that plan view is looking like. So let's get that out of the way. Let's go back to this. Overview, a little bit of the ceiling graphics, uh, exterior work coming into the form itself. This is what it might look like from the outside, which is part of that whole process here, this, this form here. Because it, it going away from us is that actual exterior. Uh, again, perspective from that from that plan view, and the breakdown. Maybe some hallway studies about what that might look like on the inside. With, you know, these these very very organic forms and surfaces around and the walls into the entryway area. Little, little pencil sketch there of entry. Now into the actual space itself. There's that diamond we're looking at. Again, the perspective change here. Are the four pillars we're looking at. Uh, let me see if I can show you what that is. These. Let's do this. These four pillars, one, two, three, and four, those four pillars are highlighted here in this sketch. Very extreme one point, but there's one, two, and then behind that, three and four. This is what you see when you come in, for example, of how to get into the space. And these are the modules as they break down as you begin to see that from the entryway piece, as opposed to unlike this one, which is what showed us the overall Oh, pardon me, just one, sorry about that. Which showed us the overall intent of the perspective. This is more of a detailed view looking into the space itself once you're inside when you walk in. Next step, a little bit more detail in terms of what those ceilings and graphics might look like. Just take a little step further. Same process of the actual diamond form as you come in and the, 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 the breakdown modules for the disciplines. Then again, back to a revised little perspective study of what that shape might look like after going through some of the changes in terms of the breaking down the form itself. And last but not least, what it looks like when you begin to move into the space itself. That is the upper piece, uh, the meeting area, the lofted creativity module. There are the four pillars, and there's the rest of the surrounding pieces around it. And then again, notice what's missing are those, those little those little module areas that begin to take you into the form itself. So, so there was a theme established there on that first plan view study for the sh actual shapes. Let me just put this together, and we'll come back in here. Put them together so I keep them organized there. There's one stack. Then I went into module two, for example. There's another variation on a theme, for example. We went back into a rounder surface or took, took advantage of like a, an amphitheater process. First step again was to break the space down into shape allocation and put a little bit of scale in here in terms of what the actual pieces were going to look like, what, what groups were going to be involved, and how many desks we needed, what the actual center itself would look like. So here's phase one. So there's the first sketch we did. There's the actual plan view. Then side by side, let's see if we can do this again here. There we are. So there's the plan view of the piece. And here's a perspective study of what that might look like. This whole area here comes up and pops through the actual ceiling as a roof detail uh, in addition to the actual interior piece. So there's the plan view. Let me get that out of the way. Thank you. And there's a little bit of perspective. So again, same process again. Show the plan view, put it in perspective, highlight it, revise it and show the actual finished uh, surface as part of the process here. So there's the perspective study. Notice again, this, this, this silo gets me up to that second floor area here that we're going to look in the design module area. So that's the second schedule. There's a little, again, detail of the hallway coming down, uh, the, the ceiling graph. They were more concerned about the ceiling graph as being a really interesting eye catcher as opposed to the wall surfaces. And we can do things with the wall but a lot of emphasis on the lighting system and the actual graphics going up on top of the ceiling, which are these floating banners and lighting systems and, and diodes and, uh, and, uh, and uh, fluorescent lighting and so forth. And uh, uh, just really interesting, very, very interesting sort of circumstances. There's a little perspective side there. Here's the first blush of that, that same module. Let's go back to this for a moment. This is that same module. There's that center area in, in location. There it is in perspective. So again, showing the process of where that's gonna locate itself. And again, notice a little bit of scale back here. And again, the actual divides of the walls and the areas, and not the walls, but the actual sections of the, uh, the product disciplines involved in the, in the process. Now, here's another one. Again, a little variation. Again, notice how we've truncated it back a little bit and brought that, that whole module up on top here um, to look, take a look at how that whole process begins to open up and move in. 
really interesting itself. Now we go back into this. Um, again, it's a little bit more sedate graphics in terms of the walls, but again, just to give them a presence of what that form might, or that shape would look like. Again, back to a revised area here. Notice in red, you see what that happens here. That red area, and, and that uh, circles in perspective, comes off of the tower, and that's where you take the elevator up into this whole design, this uh, creativity module that they really, really had a lot of interest in. And then last but not least, a little bit of a conceptual study about what that space might look like in terms of coming up the module. You don't see the actual act of the, the, the uh, module. So this is more of a view coming in, showing what that, what that staircase might look like. And again, some ceiling graphics to kind of give you an idea what the lighting might look like. Um, interior concept, just a visionary study in terms of breaking down the space. So that was the end of that one. Pardon me as I just put this together here, and we'll move along. And there it is. Last set was here. It's a series of, again, process-wise plan view. Let's open this up a little bit. Here's the process itself. <clears throat> again, uh, very organic in terms of wall structures, but still very open. These are all low. And again, that very center diamond area became the actual hub area. Uh, for example, of the design hub or the creativity hub itself. Same overall space. Uh, here's the plan view. Here's the elevator, a little perspective study. Let's put them side by side again so you can see them. I think that'll work here like that. Does that kind of work just about right there? Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. So there's there's the actual plan view. Here's a little bit of perspective interpretation so you can see what the ceiling is doing, where the hallway is, where the entryway area is, and then again into the space itself and what's happening with some of the breakdowns in terms of the discipline. So there we are. And we come back into here. Again, a little bit of wall and uh, graphics and ceiling study here, a little bit more sedate, uh, not nearly as flamboyant. But again, another pattern to look at. <coughs> Pardon me. Again, sorry. <coughs> here we go. Um, this is more of a look of what that might, that diamond area, for example, might look like in terms of when we're looking at this whole section. Skylighted, second floor, and again, the pillars that kind of support that. Notice you come in through here and approach that to uh, see it as I study it unto itself. We'll come back here. Revised study in terms of putting together the actual piece itself. There's a, and again in red is that whole pillared area where you get into the design module and move into that second floor. And again, very few revisions, but I just wanted to spot in where then red, where that actual module area would sit. And again, back into, again, revised little, little line study about what that might look like in terms of going back in here. <coughs> what, pardon me. Uh, the stairway up to it level and then again this is where the actual level itself the activity level would be then this is the ceiling graphics above that yet so we go back in again a little thumbnail sketch about some exterior work and what that might look like in terms of again a little variation in theme across the top with these these very long spines that can kind of go metal to glass to metal to glass and let that become part of the process itself so we go back in and last but not least this would look like in terms of putting together the module here's the actual lofted area here's how you get there the stairwell the pillars. Uh, notice, not nearly as fine buoyant. We had an elevator system in there. We just kind of pulled back a little bit and went to a stair or a stepping system to get up to it. But again, that's a really good, interesting set of circumstances of how to get to uh, what this form is going to look like in the interior space from the architectural exterior into the interior. And again, some of the landscaping as well. So it was all part of the whole process here. So let me stop here for a moment. And that kind of culminates part of the vision, I mean, there's so much more stuff that I just could not, I can't believe how much more information there was in putting this all together. I didn't want to get into a situation where all of a sudden we started to choke, choke the daylights out of a lot of conversation about um, elements that were not really pertinent or vital to the process itself. So um, on top of these sketches, there were just hundreds more being generated from loose to finish to final rendering surfaces and the like. Um, and some of that work is being done, for example, it's being held um, in the archives at Procter & Gamble because of, uh, again, because of the exclusivity of the project itself, the visionary statement itself. Uh, so let me stop for a moment. Any, any questions at all, concerns, gang, about that kind of culminates where we are. I want to show you something as an offshoot of this whole process. Um, what took me uh, some time, a, a very long project, which again, it's an honor to work with these guys. I mean, it was just great to develop that, that, that relationship with that team. Any questions at all, anybody? Commentary, feel free. We really look forward to the input here again. Uh, helpful, hopefully.
to see what the process does. Uh, uh, yeah, how long were you working? That was probably about a six month to almost a year project, uh, Chip. It was a very consuming set of circumstances. And again, what I showed you here in this hour is almost just a drop in the bucket as far as sketches are concerned in terms of well, working back and forth with them as a team. So yeah, it's quite a ride, absolutely. Right. But again, such a learning experience, Chip, from working with tremendous people down there in that process at, uh, at their uh, at their design center in Cincinnati and then being being invited to be a part of something that was completely very very quiet and very stealth like uh, they were going to look at their visionary system we're looking at a whole new campus we want you to be the lead designer um, thanks very much Doug uh, a, lot, a, a very very big privilege for me to be a part of that process and I, I will say this too it wasn't my first um, project with p and G. I did a lot of packaging work with them um, impressive I know they're oh yeah yeah well you, you got that right you know how they go as well David they're very well said but I, it wasn't a situation where I was new to them I had done some packaging work with them in the past some product development work with them when I had my uh, studios down in the city uh, so I was very familiar with what they did but when this came along I was really taken back by the fact that they, I, was, I was flattered that they had asked me to become their design guy because I'm not an architect I'm not an interior guy I'm just a design guy um, but somehow they came to me and asked me to, to kind of be the, the, the lead man on this whole project. And uh, uh, again, sort of, I, I, I don't want to be redundant, but I felt very honored to be a part of the process. And it was uh, one of those situations when all said and done, uh, since then, I've come back with them from a lot of projects in terms of uh, uh, everything from healthcare to dental work, uh, Gillette uh, series, uh, you name it. Every one of their divisions have had some division or some interaction with. But I thought I'd wrap things up with a nice little, a little surprise that came my way. As a result of this, about maybe two or three months after the project, uh, there was a little bit of lull in the bombing to kind of absorb all this stuff. Then uh, I got a call from one of the design directors down there, and um, and they said, hey, we've got a real, uh, a, a really interesting task for you. So, oh, this ought to be fun. Another one of those pressure moments, and we all laughed. And uh, we said, listen, we've got this idea for this Gillette uh, Performance Fitness Center in downtown Manhattan. But we don't have any input on it. Uh, but we've and, it's, and the sketches are doing about three days. Can you give us some input as to what this thing might look like? Um, so I just went right at it. Yeah, do it tomorrow. You got it, Dave. <laughs> we all know that one, don't we, Dave? Man, it just it seems to be part of our lot in life. So I, I swallowed hard and said, Yeah, I'd be more than that. if I can help you, I will. So I hung up the phone and I started sketching some little thumbnail sketches. Uh, of what this interior might look like and what this exterior might look like for this Gillette Performance Center. So I sent them down that same afternoon um, and uh, I waited and waited and waited about uh, midday. I got a note back to them saying, this is absolutely terrific. Uh, please go ahead and do so. Just, just crank them up. So um, based on that input, let me show you what happened here. These are, these are copies of the sketches I sent to them as finals, and these are copies, and the, the, sent, the finals I sent to them were very large format. They were 24 by, almost two feet by four feet. Um, and um, so I did that all in one day's time, shipped them back to them, and this is what they looked like. This is a scaled down version of what these sketches look like. There was the first one. This is the exterior study that was done uh, in marker, pastel, and fine line pen. This is a ballpoint pen sketch. So this is the first thing I sent down. Notice the Gillette Performance Fitness Center in Manhattan, a little bit of background in the back. This is all just off the cuff in terms of what if we did the blades, what if we did the building with the actual shaver center on it. I mean, just, just taking chances. And I was shocked at the fact that, that the pencil sketches I sent down were just almost like this, the same mobile I care. They're just little eight and a half by 11 pencil sketches to get an approval. What do you think, gang? They came right back and said, go. Uh, and I did, and I sent them down, and um, and I'll show you. I'll, I'll, I'll terminate in a moment here as to what took place. So here's here's the first one and only first pass exterior sketch. Here was the interior study. One pass at it, what the interior might look like, in terms of coming back in the entry area, the signage, some of the product displayers, and they had a fitness center back in there. I mean, all these things were. I just just winged it. I said, what if, what if, what if. I took a chance and conceptualized the whole space glass some product gear area for example some after some product work uh, office space a uh, very simple tower like a razor tower coming out through the process of this thing like a product group of some sort or maybe a carousel to, to kind of look at but these are just really a second story office space area and i just really again pardon me for being redundant but it was just one of those deals where i just kind of flipped the coin and said well i hope this works and uh, sure enough it did this is the second sketch and i did it on top of that the third sketch i sent down was this this is a detail of that uh, let me bring this back for a moment here this sketch here 
is a detail of what this area might look like right here in terms of looking down the hallway into the space itself. So there's sketch number two. Here's the third one where the product area is. You look down the hallway again, product around it. So I'm a sport activity pieces over here, some wall graphics. Notice again that Gillette kind of razor system that they have three or four tier system they work with. Uh, silo going into the place here, putting it in some space. Again, product display around here. And again, just a really quick study in terms of I hope this works. And uh, thank God it did. So I just want to let you know that as a result of that big architectural push, let me put this aside here on the Visioneering project. Uh, this came my way as well, and several others have come my way since then too. So um, in closing here, extremely grateful for the fact that I've had really a, a, a tremendous relationship with a lot of great corporations. And uh, again, very blessed to know that they, they, re, they appreciate the work and I appreciate them um, uh, inviting me to be a part of their team. And uh, if there's any message out of this, for example, that, uh, that comes out of this stream today, it's simply this. I think one of the greatest assets we have is our ability to not only be creative, but to be con 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 constructively conversationalist and excited about working with other people and respecting their skills. This whole thing came about as a result of people who really know their business. It wasn't a matter of me, other than this guy, it was a just pure guess. But the, uh, the whole visionary project was working with individuals who really knew their craft so well. Uh, it, was, it was exciting, and yet what was exciting about it was this. They did not know my craft that well, the design side of life. They're they not really tuned into the creative side of life, which was an asset for me in working with them. So let me stop there, there for a moment, and I'm not trying to, to uh, evangelize here. I'm just saying how necessary it is to understand that uh, one of the great things that, uh, that sustains a career is your ability to sustain a career by respecting other people. And no matter what their station in life is, or in the corporate life itself, or the, or the ladder, or the priorities, or the prototypes, um, boy, believe me, listen to them. They know a whole lot more than we do. And it's really, stay humble. That's the key, stay humble. Because the more humble, I think one of the great things, I've said this before in some lecture series, one of the greatest lessons I've learned is a very simple term, that the, the, the term humility, in the original Greek Hebrew term means what? You know what it is? Humility in the original context of the term means by translation, extreme power. Think about that. The more humble you are, the more you begin to display the power you possess. And I think that's what's interesting about the whole creative process. So remaining, remaining humble is a term that's used, for example, that, that, that gives us as designers the right to be powerful because we remain humble. We know what it's like. We have an understanding of what that's like. It doesn't mean you give in. It doesn't mean you compromise or you become cowardly in terms of what your approach is, but you understand the fact that by being humble or having the sense of humility of not knowing it all and being able and, and understanding and, and willing to learn from great people that, that surround you, that's terrific. That's powerful. It's, there's nothing There's nothing greater than that. I mean, there's not a, not a greater asset. So, again, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today. This was a lot of fun. Anybody in closing here, any comments at all, please feel free. I hope this has been of some help. Every now and then, I might just go through some of the archives and take you through some of the project case histories for product design, transportation design, uh, some Ferrari work. I mean, I, 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 I do a lot of car stuff, but, I, but my, my real passion is anything but cars. I, I enjoy that, but I enjoy architecture, the product design, interior space. Uh, just interesting stuff. Well, I, thanks very much, uh, Chip. Um, it's epic in terms of uh, you being part of the audience. I have a lot of respect for you, Chip, and thanks for that very kind comment. It's not epic in any sense at all. It's expected. Let's put it that way. It's expected from us to really begin to put together. Hey, Demetrius, how are you? Um, what, what really, uh, what's expected from us is to be nothing more than great stewards of our responsibility. When someone asks me to do a job, for example, or am I involved in something with them? Um, I'll go out of my way to make sure that they are treated with respect and I just floodgate them with ideas because to me it's it's great to see people react to our skills. And I'm sure you all agree, those of you who are listening here today, that one of the greatest rewards is to have people say of you, it's better to have a great name than all riches. And I mean that sincerely. A great name will get you a long way because, again, because you, you understand what it takes to get there. Understand that other people know a whole lot more than we do. And boy, if we tap into that, there's no end to our successes. So thanks very much, gang. Great. Uh, Demetrius, good to have you on board. David, wonderful. Chip, Doug, great stuff, gang. Uh, thank you for taking the time to be with me today. This has been as helpful for you. It's exciting. And I went back to this. is kind of neat. I went back to the archives and hey, I actually did this. Well, as an old man, I actually did this. It was a great fun to learn an awful lot. So in closing, uh, please take a moment if you can. Uh, please feel free to go ahead um, and uh, look at my website, drcontrast.com, uh, and, and be, 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 
be careful and tune in because some some exciting things are coming on here from the Dr. Contrast side of life. I might be changing my 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 schedule. Uh, we'll take a look at that. I'm also opening up next week. I'm starting to do a series of short videos, 20 minute clips on different circumstances. Uh, for example, five studies on architecture, five on interior space. Real fast little snippets to kind of put into a website and add to that. So that's all coming. Also, a store is doing opening up. We're going to start looking at some apparel work on the on the website. So stay tuned, gang. And again, please feel free at any given time to drop me a note at Jim at drcontrast.com. And in closing, I really mean this with all my heart because I have great respect for all of you for tuning in. And uh, never forget to dare to be great. Always do that uh, because you are. Thanks very much, gang. Have a great day. We'll hopefully see you on Thursday. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye now.